Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Tanvi Bhatt. I am a consultant chest physician. Sleep apnea is basically defined as cessation of breathing for a few seconds. Now, depending on how many seconds it is, we can de define it whether partially the patient stops breathing during sleep or he stops completely. Let me explain you it in a very simple manner. What happens is whenever we breathe normally, at that time, the air goes through a narrow passage, which is the airway. We have certain muscles which are in the active form during when the patient is awake and then it goes to the lungs. During sleep, what happens is these muscles which are besides the airway, they are in a relaxed mode. So when the patient is sleeping straight on his back, that is supine position. So sometimes there is relaxation of those muscles which causes compression of the airway. It can be either partial or complete compression for a few seconds that causes apnea. Apnea is stoppage of breathing and it occurs during sleep. That's why it is called as sleep apnea. Now what happens next is when if the air is not going through the passage to the lungs, the oxygen supply reduces to the lungs and to the body. That gives a signal to the brain that you need to become active. There is no oxygen to the entire body. And the brain becomes awake and it awakens the patient. So the patient may get awake during the night multiple times for several seconds. And that again resumes breathing. Sometimes the patient might not even know that he's getting up multiple times during the night. Apnea is complete stoppage of breathing for 10 seconds. And there are certain conditions where there's not complete stoppage and where it does not complete uh, the entire 10 seconds, but it is less than that. The most common being the obstructive type, which is seen in adults. The other types are central sleep apnea and mixed or complex sleep apnea. The mixed or complex sleep apnea is basically a combination of these two. Now, let me explain the most common one, which is obstructive sleep apnea. It is more commonly seen in adults and more commonly seen in obese patients. The causes of this obstructive sleep apnea is any obstruction in the passage, which can be anatomical. See, there are patients with some uh, abnormality in the jaw, in the tongue, in the chin, or in the tonsil, adenoid. So these are all structures which compose of the entire passage of the airway, which is in the pharynx. So any abnormal structural abnormality can also cause obstructive apnea. Then other causes are obesity. In very simple terms, I can explain how the patient has fat deposition throughout the body. In an obese patient, the same way there is fat deposition in this area, which causes compression of the airway and that causes obstruction to the airway during sleep. Other causes are uh, central sleep apnea in that the regulation from the brain to the lungs stops. There is disruption of the regulation from the brain to the lungs. That's why the lungs stop breathing. This is more commonly seen in patients who are having certain heart conditions like congestive heart failure, patients who are already taking drugs like uh, sedatives, antidepressants, or patients who have neurological deficits already. The th third type is uh, the complex sleep apnea, which is commonly seen in combination of both these things. What difference we find in obstructive sleep apnea is the regulation from the brain is continuous, but the respiratory muscles movement we will not see because there is a blockage in this area. The signs and symptoms of sleep apnea, I can explain with the mechanism how we understood how sleep apnea occurs. So if there is a stoppage of passage in this area, so sometimes the patient may feel sensation of choking during the night, and he may become aware of the awakening that is happening to him multiple times in the night. Second thing is the partner can tell us better. The term is called as witness apnea. The partner can tell us that the patient was getting up multiple times in the night and then going back to sleep. Whenever there was stoppage of breathing for some time, after that the patient was gasping for air. So that is called as witnessed apnea seen by the partner. The most important symptom which the partner as well as the patient themselves can say is excessive snoring. 
which increases progressively as the weight is increasing or like this or as the facial or structural abnormalities increasing other symptoms are frequent urination during the night next symptom being when we ask the patient that during morning what are the daytime symptoms that you get so after getting up in the morning there is fullness in the head headache is there the sleep was not fresh that is what the patient complains of then there is a symptom of excessive daytime sleepiness we can explain or we can ask the patients by asking whether uh, if suppose you are wait- sitting in the waiting area will you doze off there do you doze off while driving while watching tv so are these common things causing you dozing off at certain intervals next will be patient will have a little confusion lack of uh, thought process that is brain fog that we call patient is not able to concentrate properly headaches are there so these are the basic symptoms this depends whether uh, there is any family history because it has a very positive correlation if any first degree relative has sleep apnea then there are more chances that you can get sleep apnea second is you have to see upon your own risk factors so what are the risk factors of sleep apnea first is first and foremost is obesity all obese patients should every time think whether they are getting symptoms or they should consult for this next are other comorbidities like if the patient is having multiple comorbidities like diabetes hypertension ischemic heart disease so in this patients the com- uh, sleep apnea is quite common other thing is symptoms of sleep apnea if the patient is getting if the obesity has suddenly increased over a period of 6 months to 1 year if uh, the functional functionality during the day is getting hampered if there are problems of sleep disruption throughout the night multiple times so these are the symptoms that you can look forward to how do you diagnose whether sleep apnea is there when you visit a consultant you can either visit a consultant chest physician or an ent doctor both so first we have to rule out uh, other causes that can cause obstruction in the chest as i can explain if the passage from here is getting blocked there are other reasons also which might contribute or completely cause obstruction here the most common being allergic rhinitis or sinusitis so if there is obstruction here that is what we are suspecting but if the patient is having concomitant rhinitis and sinusitis that needs to be treated first next is in children what we see is tonsil or adenoid hypertrophy so in those conditions if there is enlargement of the tonsil or adenoid that also leads to narrowing of the passage if the patient has developed thyroid recently why we need to know that because we need to give him thyroid medicines get the weight under control and after that concomitantly treat sleep apnea other thing will be treating airway disorders like bronchial asthma or copd so if there are concomitant disorders then partial cause of the sleep apnea will be these only so that's why you need to treat them first and then along with that you can treat sleep apnea so the test what we advise along with sleep apnea are first is blood investigations like thyroid test second will be pulmonary function test and ent evaluation the test to diagnose uh, sleep apnea basically is uh, polysomnography it is a test done either in the lab or at home there are four types of polysomnography first is uh, which is done in the lab second is the, which is done at home with seven channels and the third and fourth are again done at home so the first polysomnography test it has seven channels where we see seven uh, different parameters the first being eeg second be, being eog which is electroocculography seeing the eye opening third is ecg of the heart fourth is emg of the muscles that is the muscle movement during the night then you have a nasal canister through which we see whether the air is flowing inside or not then you have a pulse oximeter in the hand which with which we see whether there's a drop in the oxygen level or not and there are chest and abdominal bands to see whether the chest is rising whether the patient is breathing during the night or the breathing is stopping so this test is done throughout the night for about 8 hours at least the patient should be sleeping for 6 hours du- during this test in type 1 test we do it in a sleep lab type 2 test is done with all these channels at the patient's house 
entire night the patient is being monitored with all these parameters and next day the report is made based on that we can decide whether the patient has sleep apnea or not when we analyze this test what we have to see is calculation of apnea and hypoapnea so apnea is cessation of breathing for 10 seconds hypoapnea is less than 10 seconds and not complete obstruction so the total number of apnea and hypoapnea are added and divided by the number of uh, hours of sleep that gives us a value of the ahi that is called as apnea hypoapnea index which defines whether the patient has sleep apnea or not if the value is between 0 to 5 that becomes a normal patient if the value is between 5 to 15 that becomes mild sleep apnea if the value is between 15 to 30 that becomes moderate and more than 30 is called as severe sleep apnea based on that we have treatment protocols Sleep apnea can be cured depending on the cause of it. So first, we need to see what is the cause. If there is any, if there is any structural abnormality which can be corrected, like adenoids or um, cell which can be removed, then sleep apnea can be completely cured in those case cases. If the abnormality is in the tongue or in the chin, and any facial surgeries can be operated on them, then again it can be completely cured. if the patient is having sleep apnea due to obesity in that the treatment becomes first and for, first treatment becomes lifestyle changes weight reduction and reduction in the other comorbidities like hypertension diabetes and control of um, heart disease so along with that we go for entire lifestyle uh, management once the patient keeps on reducing the weight the ahi value also reduces and the patient sleep becomes better but based on the ahi value initially that we get we have to start doing the treatment now what we did a polysomnography is called as a diagnostic sleep study test what treatment we need to give for that we do a another test called as titration sleep study that the patient is made to sleep again the entire night again all these channels are applied but in that a mask is applied attached to a machine which gives positive airway pressure with that pressure what we try to maintain is the passage should stay open so what was happening in sleep apnea because of the obesity patient was again and again going into collapse of the airway now when we give positive pressure whenever the patient is breathing at that time with the positive pressure the airway stays open so in this titration study the amount of pressure that patient requires to keep the airway open is being measured and you get a report that this is the pressure required and we give treatment according to that so the main treatment becomes cpap therapy that is positive airway pressure appliances there are other type of machines also available which is autopap cpap and bipap depending on what exact condition the patient has depending on that we have to give the machine to the patient now if the patient is taking care of the disease well if he is maintaining sleep hygiene well lifestyle modifications weight reduction continuous use of cpap for many months with that slowly as the patient's weight reduces cpap can be complete uh, sleep apnea can be completely cured only thing patient needs to stay vigilant that it does not reoccur again as the weight will increase other options as i always told you are surgeries but they are in particular condition done only by expert surgeons after complete evaluation and along with that what i initially mentioned that treating of other conditions which are contributory to the sleep apnea should be treated like sinusitis rhinitis asthma tonsillitis adenoiditis all these conditions need to be treated parallelly and even hypothyroidism so that weight reduction and the clearance of passages made the age group which is commonly having sleep apnea are the elderly after 50 as the age increases uh, it is seen more commonly more than 50 years of age but the patients with craniofacial abnormalities or tonsillitis adenoiditis these are specifically seen in patients with younger age also patients who are having chf that is uh, chronic heart failure congestive heart failure they are more prone to develop central sleep apnea it is more commonly seen in males than females but if you see in the post menopausal females the ratio is even in both males and females it is equally common 
it is seen more commonly in patients who are uh, having excessive smoking alcohol use of uh, sedative drugs and also who, whoever has a positive family history in those patients first if the patient is coming to me with the diagnosis of sleep apnea if i am diagnosing sleep apnea so in that condition there is the time the treatment is started i would advise the patient to sleep on one side that is lateral position what happens is mainly this is happening during the supine that is lying down on back this position so when the patient lies on the sideline position the airway passage does not collapse completely there is still some passage of air so it itself becomes a treatment till, till the patient gets in sort uh, goes for the treatment we also called it as it called it as tennis ball technique in which we ask the patient to make a pocket in the nightdress t-shirt or uh, whatever apparel that is having so that whenever the patient in sleep condition if he is going to go in the lying back position automatically the patient will lie on the side position so this will be the first positional change that helps second will be weight reduction is the most important aspect of treatment of uh, sleep apnea lifestyle changes will have to be applied that is daily 45 minutes of walk yoga exercises to reduce other com comorbidities as well like hypertension diabetes and ischemic heart disease a uh, patient should avoid uh, excessive coffee and more coffee during the night time complete stopping of alcohol complete stopping of uh, smoking is advised and if the patient is using any sedative drugs so that also has to be stopped